Martin Audio Display 2.1. This video will demonstrate the workflow using Display 2.1 to design a system using Martin Audio's award winning multicellular range of products. We will use a fairly simple theatre style venue and show how the optimization process derives the system configuration and DSP parameters to produce the phenomenally smooth and even coverage over the entire venue, precisely as specified by you using the application. On starting the application, we see the system dashboard and our first task is to add an array. Select the type of array from the range of multicellular systems, specify how you intend to deploy it, in our case flown, add in the total number of cabinets, we'll stick with 12 for this project, and give the array a name which makes it easy to identify, as we may want to add additional arrays as we will see later. We need to create a 2D vertical slice through the middle of the plane in which the array will be pointing. There's an option to import a slice from an existing project, but if starting from scratch, we first need to enter very approximate maximum height and length for the room. These do not have to be accurate as we will see. First step is to click on Shell and quickly draw the rough shape of the room, clicking every time we need to add a vertex to define every plane in the venue. Don't try and position these accurately, and if you do miss a vertex or add too many, this can easily be edited. A double click and the shell is completed. We can go to the view menu to zoom in for the best fit for the drawing. On the top left of the venue lists the coordinates of every vertex we've added. This is the best place to edit the values for accuracy. Click on the first value, make any changes, tab to the next, and so on until you have tabbed all the way through and you're happy that all of them are accurate. Dimensions can be taken from architect's drawings or by taking measurements for yourself using a laser measure in the venue. Before we move on, let's look at the option for importing a venue slice. First, we need to select the file which has the drawing we need. Click on Load to do this. Navigate to the file you wish to use. And then select the appropriate array that has this venue slice you need to use. Instantly, we have our 2D slice. And now we add our array. We've already specified the size, so now we just need to position it. Again, this doesn't have to be done accurately as we have options for precisely entering the array position. Now we add our audience region. We click on the audience start, the front row seat, and we move the cursor along until we click again a second time to complete the audience stop position. And that is our venue completed. Now we need to click on the cover tab to precisely define the coverage. We have only crudely specified the audience start and finish positions. There are obviously planes within that region which are non-audience. We need to first select non-audience and then click on all such planes to change them from audience to non-audience. Under the balcony being the most obvious example. The other option available to us is Hard Avoid. The system will use active cancellation to reduce spill onto these areas. Our balcony front is highly reflective, so we click on Hard Avoid and select the balcony front plane. Now our audience offset. By default, this is a uniform offset, but if you have a variation of offsets, such as a, a standing stalls with a seated balcony, you can change every plane individually to suit the venue. In our case, however, the venue is going to be all seater, so we will change it back to uniform offset. The unassuming section in the bottom right of the window is one of the most powerful features in the system, which is the ability to define the start and stop deltas for the audience SPL relative to the reference position. For our project, we'll make the start 3 dB and the stop delta minus 3 dB, therefore we'll have a 6 dB change from front to back in the room. That now completes our coverage and the system can calculate the splay angles. We click on the splay tab and the first option we have in this section is to make final adjustments both to the position of the array and the number of cabinets. 
To start the process, click Optimize and the application goes through hundreds of combination of cabinet angles, comparing the predicted output to how we've specified we want the system to perform. The display tool has a feature called Allow Polish, which is activated by default. What this will do is trigger a second pass at the angle optimization, taking the result from the first attempt as a starting point to further refine the calculation. There we see the optimization making a start on its second pass. The computer model that is used to compare how the system is going to perform is phenomenally accurate and produces results to within plus or minus 1 dB of real world measurements. Once the optimization is completed, it will add the angles to the section in the top left of the window. And we can click done as this is finished. Next, we can go to the rig tab and we can actually check the physical attributes of the deployment of the system. In the center, we see all the angles between each cabinet. And the section bottom right shows us all the other mechanical attributes of our array, including the total mass, the load on each point, and of course, whether it passes BGVC1 and DIN's safety standards. Once we're finished with our rig tab, we go on to our EQ optimization. This gives us the opportunity to balance which system goals are most important to us. Smooth response in the audience region, leakage into non-audience areas, and level reduction in the hard avoid region. As we change one, the others increase or decrease accordingly, so we set the balance we need for the venue. Click on Optimize and the system starts calculating the DSP parameters and plotting the result. Each of the green lines represents the frequency response at the green dots that we saw in our audience region in the coverage tab. If you look at where the optimization has started in the low frequencies, we'll see that our start figure is 6 dB higher than our audience stop, which is exactly what we specified when we entered our SPL deltas. Notice how as frequencies rise from mid to high response, there's a massive variation prior to being optimized. This corresponds exactly to real-world measurement of conventional line array systems. We tested a conventional line array system using test mics placed at one meter intervals, and this was exactly the sort of inconsistency that we saw. The lower graph shows us how close to our targets we've achieved. The green line representing the target audience response was given higher priority, thus is delivering better results than the red non-audience and blue hard avoid, which are not so important to us in this project. The optimization is testing hundreds of thousands of combinations of DSP using FIR filtering, which allows changes in phase without affecting amplitude and vice versa. As with the display optimization, it utilizes the computer model to check whether it is getting closer or further from the goals we have defined, and the algorithm will learn which paths are not working and abandon them to hone in on the best possible result in a sensible time frame. As the optimization nears completion, we can see the astonishing improvement in consistency right across the frequency spectrum at all audience positions. The 6 dB delta we specified is consistent all the way across the frequency spectrum. Once the optimization is completed, the filters are calculated, we can click done and check our design in the SBL tab.
The SPL tab has three windows. The bottom right is an index plot with our position in the venue as the vertical axis. Moving the cursor up from the index plot allows us to look at the frequency response in more detail. We can see the position on the venue diagram as the star shape and at any position we can see the frequency response on the response graph. As we continue moving the cursor up we can see the response through the stalls in our theatre from the front row to the back row. We go up the back wall, underneath the balcony. When we arrive at the front of the balcony, we're in our hard avoid area, which shows some level reduction. Then as we continue up the balcony, we will see the response returning to the flat smooth response that we saw in the stalls. Towards the final seats at the back of the balcony, there is some drop of level, but the response is remaining flat. The tonal balance is very consistent. We can continue to move the cursor and we see the response on the roof of the venue and then going down the back wall behind the array. Once we've finished checking the performance of our design, we can click Done. And now we'll take a quick look at how we add a second array to our project. In this case we'll use MLA Mini which will be flown below the sub and we'll have 12 MLA Mini cabinets which will have three MSX subs. We'll call it Mini left and right and we're going to use these as a balcony delay. Now if we save our project we can import the 2D slice to save having to redraw it as we saw earlier. Give your project a name and save it to a file location where it's going to be easy to find. So go to the Slice tab, navigate to where we saved our project, in our case on the desktop. Open the project, select the, the array we want to import from, click Import, and there's our venue. Now we add our array. We're going to position this closer to the balcony that it's going to be covering. And we're going to define our audience region again. We're just going to do the rear two thirds of the balcony. We go to our coverage tab, which is going to be very straightforward because it's just a consistent seated audience. We don't need to change any non-audience areas. And we're going to make our deltas plus or minus 2 dB because it's covering such a small area. It should be able to achieve that very easily. We optimize our angles. That's finished. Click done. We'll jump straight to the EQ optimization. We'll give our target area a higher priority. Click optimize. We'll see the same smooth response, this time with the green lines closer together as our SPL delta is only 4 dB. Now we'll have a look at the response of our delay system. There's barely any response outside of the audience region, but it's very consistent and smooth in the sort of short area we've asked it to cover. Having completed our design, our next task is to export the DSP optimizations as a file so they can be uploaded to a system. We click on Export to ViewNet, and first we create a file into which the optimizations will be uploaded. Navigate to a suitable file location, in our case the desktop. Select which of the arrays you wish to export, and click the Export button. You will see the parameters for both arrays being compiled and loaded into the file. And that is the optimization process finished.
That concludes our demonstration. Hopefully you will agree that the workflow in designing a system using display is logical, straightforward and quick, yet produces groundbreaking results unmatched by any other system.